Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night prayer meeting uh, from Lighthouse Baptist Church, and we trust that you had a wonderful day. And um, we're going to ask that, uh, that you share this video, and uh, we're going to just get it out uh, through the county and um, through the state. And uh, Brother Roger is going to bring the message uh, this afternoon, so we just uh, pray in that God just is, just preaches through him and and uh, we done uh, prayed and asked God just to anoint him. And um, we just appreciate you tuning in. Be sure and share this video. And uh, we just want to thank the Lord, uh, pa our pastor. He's here. And uh, we're here to uh, back Brother Roger up. And uh, we just uh, praying that uh, God just preach him in a mighty way. Amen. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to turn it over to him. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to uh, share your word again. And Lord, uh, thank you for our church, Lighthouse Baptist Church. Th thank you for the listeners. And Lord, just thank you for our health and strength. And Lord, just thank you uh, that we know that you paid it all, Father, on Calvary. We thank you for that. And Lord, we trust if there was one that's listening tonight, and Lord, they don't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that this will be tonight they will come to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of their life. And Father, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it's good to be back. Amen. I'm telling you what, God's Word is so good. Amen. I was in it today, and I just uh, was doing some studying, and uh, Preacher Clinton called me this morning and wanted to know if I had a, a message I wanted to bring. And, uh, and I said, sure. And so uh, I said, God, you show me what to bring. Amen. And you know, in these times that we're living in, it's very very unstable and very uncertain and we must trust in God but what I want to talk to you about tonight is this let me ask you a question I titled this message do you have do you have your ticket your ticket is is something that's very important now when we go uh, and get on board of a, sh a ship or, or maybe even a plane or a bus or a train you always have somebody there that says do you have your ticket now you cannot enter uh, this ship or this plane or this bus or the uh, or the uh, train without a ticket, amen. And that's what I want to talk to you tonight about. Uh, one day, whether by death or, or, or by uh, the rapture, uh, you're going to need a ticket to enter into God's wonderful heaven, amen. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you about that a little bit tonight. Uh, you say, why do we need a ticket? Here's why. I want to give you some bad news to start with. Amen? Bad news. Uh, I want to just get this out of the way. And, uh, but uh, anyway, this is the Word of God. If you want to turn with me, have your Bibles tonight in Isaiah chapter uh, uh, 64, verse 6. Some of you are familiar with this verse of Scripture. It says, but we are all an unclean thing, and all are unrighteous. And as filthy rags, our righteousness is a filthy rags, and we are all uh, we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind taketh us away. That's the reason we need a savior. Amen. And uh, I want to talk to you a little further about that. Let's go to Romans chapter three. Some of you know these verses of scripture, but I want to share them with you again because I'm going to tell you something. We're running out of time here on this earth. The clock is ticking away. And uh, before we know it, we'll be standing before God. I don't have to worry about standing before God. I have my ticket, and that's what I want to share with you tonight. Amen? I hope you have yours. In uh, Romans uh, chapter 3, verse 10, uh, the Scripture says, uh, It is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Now listen to this. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are... Uh, they are gathered uh, together, become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now listen to that. Now here he nails it down again. This is Paul bringing, bringing the, the truth of God. Amen. This is, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongue they have used deceit, the poison of Esau, and that's, a, that is a, that's like a snake, amen, is under their lips. Uh, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Now that sounds like us, doesn't it? And uh, 
Uh, their feet swift to shed blood, destruction and misery is in their ways, and their way and the way of uh, peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now that that sounds just like you and I, Amen. But thank God we we have some hope. And I want to get these verses of scripture out of the way. But this is the reason that you need a savior to get to heaven because you are an unclean person. You are we're all unclean without Christ. There's no our righteousness is filthy rag in the sight of God. We just read that in Isaiah 64, uh, 6. And uh so let's go let's go ahead and read some more verses of scripture here. Uh People say, well, is hell real? Yes, it is real. I wish I had time to expound on that, but I want to just give you a few verses of Scripture, and I'm going to turn to Matthew uh, chapter 8, verse 12. Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, if you have your Bibles with you. And uh, I, want you to, I want you to know that there's a, there's a little he- literal hell, amen? Get over here in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. That's the first book of the Old Testament. I mean, New Testament, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm just picking at you. It is the first book of the of New Testament. Amen. A dispensation period of grace. Thank God for that. But listen to what he says. Uh, Jesus is talking to him uh, in, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. It says, And the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, and they shall be uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. That's, that's one thing he's, he's warning about the, the people that are, have never received the grace of God. And he is the grace of God. He is the Savior of the world. John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You are a sinner. I'm a sinner. Past, present, and future sins need to be done away with. And they can be done away with the, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. He came to do that. He, he, he became the substitute for our sins. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Isn't that wonderful? Now let's read on Matthew chapter 25, verse 44. I mean 41, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. He is warning again and, and, and making mention of hell. Go to 25, verse 41. Okay, it says... Shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. Now he's going to say that to those that have rejected Christ as their Savior here on this earth. They think, well, you know, I've done a lot of wonderful things, and uh, God, you know, God's going to let me into his heaven. I've, I've tithed and I've, done, I've been a, ch- a church member. My family... Uh, gave on the land for this church. We gave uh, offerings, and I've done. I've supported missionaries, and there'll be preachers that say, I've preached the word. There'll be people that say, "Well, I've done all these wonderful works." You know what? Uh, God is warning against those that think they are righteous without Christ. Amen. He's warning against them. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, it says this: "And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life." Amen. Now, Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, let's look at that one. And I have many other scriptures. We don't have time tonight. I wish we did. But uh, you read it for yourself and God will, will show you. Amen. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophets and uh, that wrought miracles uh, uh, before him with uh, with with which, which he deceived from uh, that he had uh, received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped the image these both were cast uh, alive into the lake of fire uh, burning with brimstone amen hell is a real place amen and you ought to be serious about it. There's going to be a little time left on this earth, and you're going to stand before God. And you know what? Here's the thing about it. He's going to see if the blood of Jesus has covered your sins. Amen. If not, you're going to be doomed for hell. It's not that he wants to send you there. You're making a choice. You made a choice to reject Christ, uh, the, the Lamb of God that was slain for the foundation of the world. And he paid 
your whole entire sin debt. Now, the bad news uh, is this. If you're lost, hell is going to be your home. The good news is this. Uh, how do I get a ticket? Amen. The good news is this. Let me, let me just tell you the good news. Uh, you, you ask how I can get this ticket. It's Romans. Uh, let's go back to Romans chapter 3 and let's read on. We read the bad news there, but let's read on again in Romans chapter 3. And let's read the good news. And we're going to begin in verse 21. And we'll go through 28. Let's see, get over here in Romans. I'm not, not in Romans yet, sorry. And beginning in verse 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and all and, and upon all them that believe, for there is none, no difference. Therefore, uh, uh, it says uh, in verse 23, I love this, for all is sin and come short of the glory of God. We know that. That's what we're talking about. But, but verse 24 is what I meant to say. But he's warning us again, verse 23, Paul says, For all his sin comes short of the glory of God. Don't, re don't forget who you are without Christ. You're a sinner, and you, if you reject him on this earth as your Savior, and God's made preparation for your sins, then you yourself choose to go to hell. And he doesn't want you to be there. Amen? But listen to this, verse 20, 24, Being justified freely by his grace we have, we, uh, through the redemption that is in Christ, whom God has set forth to be the uh, perpetuation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that pass through the forbearance of God. Now, pass through the forbearance of God, the remission. You know what? Uh, you, you know, remission means to be pardoned. You know, if you're in a courtroom and you're found guilty and they open a the book... <laughs> the judge says so, and he gives he gives forgiveness of what you've done uh, so what I love about uh, what, what I love about these verses of scripture is we see that there is hope amen 323 says this um, uh, nope already read that one sorry uh, we have hope through our Lord Jesus Christ so listen listen to this right here um, in verse uh, 7 of, of chapter 4 of Romans, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are, are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man who God will not impute sin. You know what impute means? Not charged for. Amen. When I, when I got saved that night, I was the worst thing in Avermore. I was the worst thing in Stanley County as far as I knew. And I knew I was going to hell. And people told me I was going to hell. And I knew that was the truth. But I just wanted to be saved. I just wanted to be forgiven. I'm like, I, I need some hope here. My mother gave me hope. She led, she led me to the Lord by, she, by loving me to Christ. She never condemned me. She never looked at my sins. She never brought them up. Amen. She just told me the one that could save me from my sins. And she, she joined in me, joined with me in prayer. And, uh, you know, uh, people got talking to me and they led me to Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, the heart of the Bible. Here it is. Uh, we, I want you to just listen to what he says. For God, for God, for your sake and for my sake, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? Now listen to what he says. He expounds on this in verse 16. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. Now listen to 336. To avoid the wrath, to listen to this, what we just read over in Romans. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Amen. But he that believeth not the Son. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. 
Wow, that makes me sad. But the wrath of God abideth on him. You say, well, Roger, what is the wrath of God? You reject Christ in this world as your Savior. And you stand before God. And he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And you know, over in Matthew, when he's explaining that, he says, there'll be many in the day of the Lord stand before me. Lord, have we not prophesied thy name? Have we not cast out demons in thy name and done all these wonderful works? I'm talking about church members. I'm talking about people that think they're born again. Their, their, their righteousness, you know, is it going to exceed God? No, absolutely not. Amen. Don't let that fool you. You cannot work your way to heaven. You can't be good enough to get there, but you can be clean enough, amen, through the blood of Jesus Christ. But you know what? God doesn't want us to go to hell. Romans 5, 9, and 10. Wow, I just love this. I love John 3, 16. That's the heart of the Bible. That's a love of God, amen. He don't care who you are or what you've done. He loves you, amen. amen. And he came to save you. He made preparations. I'm going so to do something about their sins. And they can come to me through Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And ain't no man cometh to the Father but, but by me, amen. I tell you what, I had a hard time with that. You know, I thought I had to work my way to heaven. I, I tried to clean my life up. I quit doing dope. I quit fighting. I quit bouncing parties. I started drinking tab back then, and I still had no peace. But you know what? Uh, I realized this. I needed a Savior. Amen. And I asked Christ to come in my heart and save me, and I've been saved ever since, and I've had the peace of God. This piece right here I want to read to you right quick. Romans 5, 9, and 10. Some of you know these verses of Scripture. Romans 5, 9, and 10. Let's, re let's read verse 1 to start with. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. I ain't got to worry about nothing when I die. He's going to let me in his heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. By his grace am I saved. In uh, Romans verse 9 and 10 says this, Much more being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. The wrath. So you remember the wrath that we talked about in John 3, 36? The wrath is standing before God and you ain't done away with your sins. Amen. And and. and there was John the Baptist who said, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. And God said, I'm sending Jesus, and we're going to take care of all this. These people can come to me through Christ. Amen. Glory to God. It's amazing grace. Like John Newton wrote, he wrote it. It is amazing grace. Well, I'm telling you, listen to verse 10. For if we, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the, uh, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, uh, we shall be saved. Let me read it one more time. I kind of messed it up a little bit. For if we were enemies, uh, we were reconciled uh, to God by the death of his son, much more being uh, reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. You know what reconciled means? Bought back. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. I was, I was chained by the enemy. And I'm going to tell you something. I mean, I was bound and I couldn't get away. And, and hell was going to be my home. And the devil knew it. And he loved it. And I cried out to Jesus. And you know what? Jesus come and broke him chains. I said, Lord, I need you as my Savior. He broke him chains. He said, come unto me. All you did labor and heavy laden, I'll give you a rest. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's a wonderful Savior, I'm telling you. Glory to God. All right. I want to, I want to just share with you one more verse of Scripture. And uh, I'm going to close with this. How do you get your ticket? How do you get your ticket? Well, let's just read it, okay? Romans chapter 10 says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It don't say, well, if you clean up your act, you'll join a church, if you'll do this, you'll do that, you can be saved. No. It said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what I did that night at Firefall College Chapel. Me and God. Amen. I didn't know the Bible. I, all I know is I just, I said, Lord, come into my heart and save me. I'm a rotten sinner. I don't want to go to hell. And boy, he came in. I'm telling you what, I mean, the tears run down my face and joy filled my heart. And I ain't been the same since. Amen. Have I failed since then? Sure. We all, let me tell you something. Sin's going to come. But you know what? God's taking care of sin. I'm not saying go out here and be a, just do what you want to. Right. You know what? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. Lord of God. You're not, you're, you're not, you're bought with a price. Amen. But listen, if you do this right here, this is uh, in, in verse uh, 11, for the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. There, therefore, uh, there is, uh, 
For there is none, none different between, no difference between the Jews and Greeks, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what my ticket is? Here's my ticket right here. Amen. John 3.16, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Amen. Sin is left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. Amen. That's how I'm getting to heaven. That's how I'm getting there. That's how you can get there. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, I want you to do something for me right quick. I want you to just turn to God and open your heart. Say, Lord, I've trusted in works, and I was hoping I'd get to heaven. Maybe you'd let me in because I've been a good person there. I hadn't done this, hadn't done that. But you realize this. Your righteousness and my righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of God. But his righteousness will wash us, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And you ask him, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I need a Savior. I want you to be my Savior. Please save me. And he'll do that. If you mean that tonight, maybe before you go to bed tonight, if you mean that, I'm going to tell you something. Fact is this. If you do that, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll come into your heart and save you. We just read the scripture. God's word is true. Lord bless you for being with us tonight. I enjoyed this. And I hope it, it ministered to your heart tonight. Amen. God bless you. And come to Lighthouse Baptist Church whenever you can. Uh, our, we have worship service on Sunday morning at uh, 11 o'clock. <coughs> Just come as you are. Amen. That's what Jesus said.